Welcome back to the band guide where we use Garage Band to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin, and today is the last video in the mixing stage of the Ultimate Garage Band Beginner's Guide video series. In this video series, we've been walking through everything from the first time you open up Garage Band until you export out your finished, mixed, and mastered song. In fact, we recorded a song together in the series. Now we're about to wrap up finishing, mixing it together in the series, and then we're going to master it together in the series. So definitely come back for that. And if you haven't seen the other videos, go check those out as well. And before we get into today's video, I also have some I want to give you. I've put together the ultimate GarageBand guide. This guide walks through everything from recording to mixing to mastering to shortcuts to just simple things like how to export out your song to gear you need. I mean, it's really everything and it's completely free from link in the description below. So be sure to pick it up. It's really going to help you out. But let's go and get into today's video where we're talking about automation. Automation is such a powerful tool. Automation is like having a bunch of little interns running around inside GarageBand, turning things up and down for you where you want them to come up or come down or pan off to the left or pan off to the right or kick on a guitar pedal for you. Whatever you need to have happen, you can program that to happen at the exact right moment in GarageBand. And what's cool is that if you mess it up, you just just tweak it and get it right or you just take it off no harm no foul as opposed to back in the old analog days if you needed to have a bunch of things be turned up or turned down or pan off to the side if you needed to do more than you could physically do you'd have to have other people help you with it and you were printing to tape so if you mess it up you either had to roll with it or you had to redo it and you lose that on that tape in GarageBand, you don't have any of that. You can just play around with it. If it doesn't work, no harm, no foul. And you can tweak it if it's not right and get it to be exactly what you want it to be. So it's particularly great for learning all these little variables. Now, I will say before we even get into it, one of the biggest mistakes I see early mixers make is that they automate way too early. I know I did this where you automate like first thing. You're like, that vocal is way too loud here and way too quiet here. Let me automate it. Don't automate it. We're address a lot of those things with compression. And so you want to save automation to the very, very end of the mixing process to just fine tune things so that it's really, really working for you. Now you can automate just about anything. So for example, let's look in GarageBand here. I have already automated before even starting here. I'm breaking my own rule, but this was more for like a recording purpose. I've automated to have a guitar pedal kick on at a specific point in the song. So for example, this guitar here has a strumming part and then it goes into a lead guitar line. And if we bring up this pedal board, We'll see that this EQ and this octave pedal kick on when it goes to this guitar line right here. And that's because I didn't want to have these pedals on during these chords. But I want to have them kick on right there. So that gives me like a boost. I'm just doing a boost with this EQ and an octave when it's doing that lead line. That's really helpful. That's automation too, but that's automation kind of in the recording phase. So I set that up when we were still working on the song before. but. I have not done, as you can see as I go through here, any sort of automation in terms of volume or anything like that in this. Save that for now. And as I said, you can do just about anything. So we see it on a guitar pedal there. But when you're just starting out, I'd highly recommend you pay attention to really just three things and maybe kind of a fourth. Your lead vocal automation. So can you hear every single word like you want to on the lead vocal? Compression is going to get you 80, 90%, sometimes 100% of the way there. But you might need to do a little bit of fine tuning. The second would be your effect automation. So do you want some effects to come up in some sections and down in other sections? And then your third is any sort of pan automation. Your fourth is any sort of volume automation on anything else. Just use that to your discretion. And then we're going to close out with one bonus one here for you as well. Now there's two ways you can approach setting your automation. You can either go source by source, meaning that I would go through the entire song and just listen to what the drums need throughout the entire song. And then I go through all of the percussion and then all the bass and then all the guitars and then all the vocals, or you can go section by section. So in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to go section by section and just listen through what we need. So let's go ahead and get into it. And we're going to start by just listening in this intro here and determine is everything at the right level? So we know that I've set the volumes where I think they're best across the entire mix, but maybe there's some things I want to tweak in the individual sections. So let's just start right here in this intro and see if there's anything we want to come up or down. Okay, so there's one thing that's kind of rubbing me the wrong way in this intro, and it's the grit track on these drums. So this is uh, a, just, just a cool little textural element that I like when the full drums are playing. Just adds a lot of energy to the drum sound. 
But in this intro where it's so light, it's just a little bit too loud. I think it's at a good level everywhere else. So what I wanna do is just bring this volume down just a little bit during this section, and then I'll have it pump up back on where it does this little fill at the end. So do that, do that, do. So we just have to have the volume come down leading into that. And let's find this level while listening to it. So let me set this here. All right, let's listen. I'm also going to go ahead and pump up the parallel compression on that drum fill, which will just make that drum fill hit a little bit harder. So the drum parallel compression is this like crazy track, and we're just going to have it add energy to that fill right there. Let's listen here. Very subtle, but it helps those drums just punch through a little bit better. Okay, let's listen through this section here. I think that lead line could come up a little bit right through that intro. Let's go to the volume here. And let's just turn this up a little bit. Now, if you hold control on the keyboard while you pull it up, it will go into fine control, which just makes the movement a lot smaller. If I don't select that, then it moves really quickly. So hold control and that will give you fine control. All right, let's listen to that. Too much. Good with all that. That maybe then gets a little bit lost. Yeah, let's bring that up just a little bit. So we're on the lead vocal here. Just doing a little bit of automation here. Bring that up here. Let's listen. I'm gonna have it get a little louder as it goes. I'm also gonna have it start a little bit quieter. Let's listen to this. I want this word to be up a little bit more. Holding control to make it fine control. Let's listen to this whole line right here. And then I think there's one prove right there. I think that prove is just a little bit quiet. Let's bring that up just a little bit. Just a little bit more. So I think I'm good with all those vocals. There's one thing I wanna make sure I get coming out of this pre-course. I think it's drum fill. I wanna turn up the parallel compression. So again, just a little bit of extra automation on other things volume, just to get them really sitting right in the mix. So it's not what? Cool. I think I want that lead guitar line to come up just a little bit more to this line. So let's just have that come up hit A here. And I'm going to have it come up just for this little lead line section. So hold control here. Let's bring this up. Let's listen to that. Every day we keep racing through space. But I'm so stuck in this. Cool. So stuck in 
Let's have that fill do the same thing again. Dat, dat. I'm just going to have it go through that whole section right there. And then I'm going to have this, the parallel compression come up on that drum fill. Dat, 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 dat. So we're just going to have this automate up just a little bit. Let's do that in solo here. A little bit more. Uh, I think that might be a little bit too hot. Let's try this one more time. Cool. Okay. So I think that's good in terms of the volumes. The only other thing I want to pay attention to here is the effects. So this is a pretty straightforward song. I'm not doing any pan automation here, but I want to see if these effects can come up when I get to this chorus here. So they're set pretty well in this verse lost level. My last job, can't lose this one. Oh, get no work done. But I bet when we get to this chorus, they can come up a little bit. So I'm just going to use the volume on these to bring them up just a little bit. The slap just a little bit. And then this time delay just a little bit. Let's listen in the context of the song as we set these last two here. Now one more time. Okay. Feel really good about that. I think we're accomplishing everything we need to here. We're just turning things up just that last little bit, the last five, 10% to help it really sit at the right volume at every point in the song. We're turning our effects up when we need to. Uh, and we're just adding a little bit more interest and a little bit more uh, fine tuning to get this exactly where we want it to be. Okay, so that's automation. Now, there's one more thing I wanna share with you since we're wrapping up our mix in this video, and that's how to export out your song so that it's loud enough to listen to on your car stereo or on your AirPods or Bluetooth speaker or wherever else you wanna to listen to outside of GarageBand. So here, you just need to go to your master track. So I'm just on any of my tracks on the smart control window, click over to my master. And here, I just want to set on my very last plugin, go under dynamics and set a limiter. Now, what a limiter is going to do is it's going to set a brick wall before the point where your mix is going to digitally distort. So at that, at digital zero, your mix is just going to digitally distort. It's going to stop it, but then you can push the volume of your mix up into it, turning up the volume without getting that digital distortion. So we need to set the output level here to negative one. And then we can just turn the gain up here and we just wanna be listening that we're not getting any adverse effects here. So this is gonna get louder in your ears as well. And you'll also see on this meter up here that it's gonna start hitting red, but that's fine because this limiter is gonna protect it from actually digitally distorting. It's showing red because it's really, really close to the top, but as long as you have a limiter set as the last plugin on your master track, it's not gonna be getting too loud. So let's do this in the louder section of the song here. So I noticed as I started to get louder there that I was starting to feel like a little bit of pumping from it. And that's what you want to listen for is, is it starting to sound a little bit weird? So pay attention to that, but you can add six to 10 decibels on most songs if you've been following my mixing process here without having too much of an issue with pumping or things like that. And in the next couple of videos after this, as we move into mastering, that's where we're gonna safely turn up the volume to be really, really loud. But this is gonna get you loud enough to now go listen to it in your car. The last thing that you wanna do after you've done that is set your cycle region just to the length of your song. So make sure you know you hear the very end of your song here and you get any tail, which by the way, if you need to fade out, uh, if you hold Shift Command M on the keyboard, 
you'll see your master track here, hit automation, and then here we can pull up volume and do a fade out. So right there at the end, I can have this fade out right after that last hit. And you can just use a pen to draw it in if you want and listen to this. Now. Cool, right? Okay, so then I just want the cycle region to, you know, end right where that ends. So that's pull that out one note. And then we want to go to the very beginning of our song here. And I just want to set it to start right before the very start, which for me is on bar three. Cool. And now we go up to share, export song to disc. And if I'm just listening to my song in my car or something, then I will just export it as an MP3 and select export cycle area and title your track. And then you can send it to yourself, listen to it in your car, however you want, air, Bluetooth, all that good stuff. And then you might need to go through a couple rounds of revisions once you're hearing it on other systems. That's very, very common. Don't be discouraged. It's very common after you finish your first mix. Even though I've been mixing for years, I'll still hear some things when I listen to it in other places. Over time, you'll get better and better and more comfortable with mixing, you'll have less and less of that. But it's an important step to take it and listen on other systems before you go through the mastering process. So go ahead and do that. Do a couple rounds of revisions. Don't let yourself get overwhelmed with it and focus on the best that you can do right now and not worrying about it being perfect. There's never gonna be a perfect mix. I've never done a perfect mix. I don't know anyone who's done a perfect mix. Well, maybe some of the pro pro pros have, but most people can't do a perfect mix and partly you can't because mixing is subjective. There's things that I like the sound of that you might not like the sound of. So there's no such thing as a perfect mix. But as long as you're intentionally taking the time to just incrementally improve it, you can get a great mix, which is what we're really going for here. Okay, so go through the automation process, set that limiter on your master track to bring up the volume, take it and listen to it in a car a few times or wherever you like to listen to music, and then do a couple rounds of revisions, and then I'll see you back in the next video where we're gonna be mastering this. And that's where we're really making it loud and bringing it up to commercial standards. Okay, before you go, be sure to grab the Ultimate GarageBand Guide for free from link in the description below. It goes through recording, mixing, and mastering in there as well, so you can always quickly reference back to that. But I... And as always, I would love to hear from you. Have you been saving automation for the end or have you been doing this way too early in the mixing process? Let me know in the comments below. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow. We're gonna start moving into mastering. One thing at a time.